Hello there, this is the Gigabyte Extreme Gaming Software. I noticed that my old tutorial on this was very outdated and I put very little effort into it, so let's update it and try and prevent the issues that people were having before. So here's this, um, the Gigabyte Extreme Gaming Software is right here. To open it, click down here, right click and then click open or search up Extreme with an X because for some reason we can't spell extreme with an E. So once you're in the software, choose the graphics card you want to modify the settings of. I only have one. It's a 1060 uh, G1 gaming, I don't know, 3 gig I think. I don't I don't honestly remember. I, I built my computer. Oh, it is 3 gigs. Cool. Um, so by default this will be closed here, but you can open it by clicking monitor and then that'll show you your GPU clock, memory clock, GPU voltage. Um, fan speed, the RPM, um, GPU temperature, and it will show you power consumption, GPU usage, CPU usage, memory usage, and page file usage. So, scrolling through this is something I didn't realize was a thing until long after my previous tutorial was made, so there's that. Um, here's your overclocking screen. I've actually done a separate tutorial on this that will go way more in depth in this, into this than this video will. Um, one thing that I've gotten questions on is what this thing does here, and what this does is it links these two sliders together. When you unlink it, only one slides. Um, yeah, that's that. Not too complicated. This just changes the maximum voltage of the GPU. Um, here's your GPU clock speed, so that would change this here, but it does not change it in real time. It only changes it when it needs it. So by default, it would be zero, and Okay, let's go let's see if we can hit zero and that's about 1595 but what I have it set to is 26 um, and that's just because that's what the software applies in the advanced OC over here um, memory clock once again changes your memory clock pretty simple same thing as the GPU clock just with memory here's the advanced overclocking you can see I have it set on OC mode which stands for overclocking mode um, but there's also gaming mode, which as far as I know, it is the default clock speed for this card. And eco mode, which will save some power. Next tab, you have your fan settings. Um, this is pretty easy. <laughs> um, you have turbo, auto, and silent, which will make the graphics card silent. This is probably a mix in between turbo and silent, which was which is still pretty silent. And up here you have your 3D active fan, and when that is on, your fan will stay off until a certain point, but when that is off, your fan will stay on forever, well, until it runs out of power or something. Um, I prefer leaving that on just because it makes a quieter computer, plus then you have that extra light on your graphics card if it has RGBs. Your advanced settings, you can either have one set percentage, like 100%, that could be good if you're pushing your graphics card to the limits with like a benchmark or something or your manual setting over here which lets you change your fan curve in accordance to whatever you want so you could just have it like go 80 here and then suddenly just 100 which is unreasonable because when is your graphics card going to be at 0 degrees celsius aka 32 fahrenheit um, then your led settings um, I'm not sure how to fix issues that people were having with this tab other than the fact that they may not have a graphics card with RGBs, which is possible, but unlikely. So to turn them on, you click the on button, of course, and then if you have like a 1070 or 1080, 1080 Ti, maybe Titan, I'm not sure if Titans are supported with this, but you just click select all or you can change each individual card and then, of course, turn it on. Then you have different settings for your style of lighting so breathing will make it like breathe off and then back on and you can also change the speed so this is making it go quite fast um, but we're just gonna leave that there I prefer it on consistent flashing makes it flash once again you can change the speed of that and that gets quite annoying so I'm gonna turn that off and then down here you have your brightness which I honestly don't like I prefer it just as bright as possible. Then you have your preset colors, but you can also go with HTML color codes, or it gives you a nice slider, um, which does not update in real time. I can confirm I'm looking at it right now. So I generally just prefer this color of blue here, 
because it matches up with my desktop background most of the time. <laughs> Unless, of course, I change it to, like, Christmas or something. I don't know why I feel the need to do that, but festive. <laughs> um, so, this is my tutorial. Um, check the little eye up here for more tutorials. I've currently only made one for overclocking. Um, I'll probably make one for fans and LEDs in the future. Near future, of course, since I'm making the effort into updating this one. And yeah, if you think I didn't touch enough on anything in this video, check out my original video. It's terrible. You're probably here from the intro of that video. Holy crap, that was terrible. <laughs> um, so, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, support the channel, subscribe, like the video, comment, I don't care. If you hated it, dislike it. Tell me how much you hated it in the comments. I don't care. I honestly don't. <laughs> Thanks for watching.